Hello. All right. What's going on? All right, Rick, you got to scoot in here, dude. Uh, you got to get in, get in real close, cause it, you got to fit both of us up in here. Oh, let me get your name up in there. That's Rick Reynolds. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode of Inside the Player Studio, where we go over some of your assets and talk about how cool and awesome they are. And also tell you how you can make them even more awesome. Hi, Arctorn. There you go. Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Reynolds is in the house today, and he's going to explain some really, really important information that we have on our international rollout. So without further ado, Mr. Reynolds, oh, take it away. Go first. Nice. Okay. Starting from the beginning for a moment, uh, some of you have been waiting for this. You all know we have a Player Studio website at www.soe.com slash Player Studio. And that, um, uh, if you go there and look at the bar across the top, there's a new menu item on the right hand side that says Tax Registration W8W9. Click that. Let's see if I can, uh, oh, are they, can they see this now? Yep. It takes you to a page that looks like this. Okay, yeah, player tax form submission. Okay, so this is, people who don't know what we're talking about, why is there tax registration in Player Studio? What are you talking about? Well, anytime you're going to make money, you have to pay taxes on it. Uh, and this has been one of the things that's been holding us up with rolling out uh, participation to international areas. So now we've got most of our work done on four more countries, Canada, the UK, Germany, and France. So right here we have um, actually some really interesting information uh, in the FAQs. Most people ignore it, but uh, there's, some, there's some great stuff in here to read and understand a little bit more. And then um, there's a really long version here under tax info that it does explain some too. I'll even click it. Um, it's This is uh, boring and dry. Um, but, oh dude, did I mess that yeah, up? Yeah, you killed it. Yep. There you go. Story of my life. Okay, but then when you really want to get going, yellow button. It says begin. It really should say continue because uh, from time to time you will come back to this, um, especially if you don't do it all in one in shot. But um, uh, a, a few things here. If you click it, the first thing it does is ask you to log in to your Player Studio account. Okay, this one's already been uh, logged in, so it took us to the next part. But it, it, what it would do is, it will look to see, um, it will look at your Player Studio account and what we knew know about not Player Studio, our SOE Station account, and it will know what we know about you. And one of the things it will check is your age. If you're between 13 and and 18 years old, 13 and 17 years old, it will take you to a special page that explains the tax ramifications and how you're going to need to get your mom or dad or uh, legal guardian to actually submit the things for you and they'll have the tax liability. Oh, I'm a little outside the box. You're way outside the box, dude. Oh, Just dude, get, I see. Get back in the okay. middle. There you go. I, I want to stay inside the box. It's one of my rules in life. All right. Uh, so... Yeah, there, and then it will take you to let you get your parent or guardian to go through the tax registration flow. Okay, but everyone else, um, it will look at you and say, "Okay, you're 18. You're old enough. What what is your location? Uh, and if it's in one of the, well, uh, no. And then it uh, and then it says, "Okay, what we need next is we need a fee, and that's because." Uh, we get charged, we have two different companies actually who do parts of the background check and in, interest and in information validation behind the form. And so we have to pay one of those companies and they pay the other one and blah, blah, blah. So it ends up, it costs us a fair amount of money. So we're asking everyone for a $10 one-time registration fee. You only need to do it once. If you ever have to go back and change your uh, your name, your address, or something on the form, that won't, you won't have to pay again. Um, some folks will have some questions that may come up with their uh, submission, and they may need to go back and forth a little bit with the tax guys to get through. That won't 
that won't be an extra charge, that, that kind of thing. Once you've paid the fee, you're going to get an email that has a receipt. And you can pay with a credit card or PayPal, or I think those are the two options at the moment. You get, you're going to want to save that receipt email because it will have two important pieces of information in it uh, that you're going to need to log into the system. But anyway, looking at the form here for a moment, you have to answer, are you an individual or business name? Uh, SOE, um, well, the, the law in America is in order to give tax advice, you have to be a um, licensed tax professional, and um, we are not. So we're not allowed to give any advice on how to fill out this form, unfortunately. We're supposed to tell you to speak to your tax advisor uh, for help on this. But, there, um, but keep in mind that the terminology involved here is all tax, it's all um, read it from the perspective of filling out a paper form for the U.S. Internal Revenue Service. Think about it that way, and um, that might be helpful in some way. I don't, I really can't say anything else. I probably can't even say that, but uh, you'll, you'll fill it out, fill it out and hit continue. If at some point, um, and then one of the things that we'll ask you to do is put in the vendor ID and the registration code that you got in your tax uh, email, in your tax, uh, your receipt email. You enter that in, and that will log you into a system. Then you, it'll start putting up a few questions at a time on the page. You don't, um, you don't have to do the whole thing at once. You can save and exit if you want to, and then come back and find your way. You'll, you're going to start again at the uh, W9 page like this and then click begin again and you log into your station account and then it will take you into the next part so that's that's how you get back in and then once you've once you've at least paid the the ten dollar fee it will show you a status uh, page uh, when you get there that that tells you you know how far you've gotten to some it doesn't say much but it'll tell you how far you've gotten a little bit it will tell you if you've started or if you've put the whole thing in or if you are you know just waiting for an approval or if you're approved etc when you get to the end of the form it will send you another email that has a special part in it called a pin a pin uh, uh, that that's a shorter code it's like a little password you can only use it once that is used in place of um, of signing the uh, tax paperwork to submit the form and authenticate it as I swear I'm telling the truth. Uh, that, because you can't do that on your screen, um, the IRS will not accept a signature on the front of your monitor. You, you'll have, what you'll have to do is you'll copy and paste that pin into the um, the right spot on the form where it will tell you, and then that will make a special button uh, become active, and you can press. Sometimes people have said it takes a few seconds for the button to become active. Just be patient or maybe move your mouse around a little bit to find the right spot and then click uh, authenticate and it will save your thing, submit it to the thing. And then uh, people, elves will come at night and review your form. And, uh, so so is, like this the, is this the official rollout or are we just doing this just to kind of get the bugs out of the system? This is a, this is a test. But it is also real. Uh, the The results of it are real, but it does it is a test, and there are more there are more tweaks that we're making to it and um, improvements to it, and we're we're trying to understand uh, how long it takes to do this. Uh, if we can make the flow go faster, if we can make it have less uh, problems or fewer questions from people. Right now, there are a fair number of questions that do come in. I'm, I'm stacked up, I'll admit, uh, a couple days' worth of uh, questions at the moment. But I'm working my way through them. Sweet. Uh, somebody asked about uh, the next batch of eligible uh, countries. Here's the, the We are working on five more countries uh, after this. The, the problem with telling you the countries is that if one of them hits a legal thing, uh, and we can't get around it, 
well then we have to put that country aside for now and go and take it the next one off the list so I do not want to disappoint the players who are playing in <laughs> Australia and Brazil and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, we're working on their stuff, but we hope to make it work. But, uh, you know, we can't say anything yet. All right. Well, that's all you can do. You, all you got to do is try. That's we're what we got to do. We got to try we're and see trying. if we can make that happen. Oh, there's one more thing. What's that? There are a few people who've already made it through the whole process and gotten approved on the tax side. That does not mean yet that you can go ahead and submit to Player Studio. There's one more legal hurdle we have to go through, uh, and it involves a new version of the item submission agreement. Right now, the item submission agreement that you accept when you submit something to us um, is a U.S. version, and it doesn't have it's not hasn't been written to work across multiple countries yet. Mm -hmm. We've got a draft that's going through a whole outside attorney review process and other tweaks to it that hopefully will be ready soon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it might need two more weeks or even possibly three more weeks before all the different outside groups have come back to us. They each have their own queue. They're not in a big hurry, etc. cetera. So we're, uh, we have limited um, uh, leverage to speed them up. So uh, when that comes back, we will put in a new item submission agreement. It's a legal contract that you accept when you submit something to us. And among other things, it gives us the legal right to use your artwork because it's your intellectual property in our games. Uh, it's the main reason why we can't accept something from a 16, 17 year old directly. It's because we can't enter into a legal contract with um, a minor to license their intellectual property, but we can with their parents. There it is. Some uh, pretty deep tax law type stuff. Very complicated. Very Thanks. complicated. It's not that fun. If you're if you're like Arc Torn or some of these other guys who've already gone through the paper version of of this and you've already been submitting things to Player Studio and you have some in the store, this is not for you. You guys have you guys are grandfathered into this system and did it on paper. Um, the paper version is going away, and it will all be digital like this. Oh, my God. But, yeah. It's 2014. Imagine I, I, that. I, I, yeah. No paper. It, yeah. Uh, I had to bring a piece of paper with me <gasps> so I could write down those. Sacrilegious. I know. If you, um, uh, yeah, so you guys can't help us test, unfortunately, unless you can go talk your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, someone else, your, you know, your neighbor next door to who has artistic skill to come over and come try it. <laughs> All right. Nicely done. So uh, I guess we should be expecting more information coming soon. Yeah. The uh, Jay Drick asked, so did player studio folks have to pay taxes? Yeah, they did have to pay taxes. You can ask. They're paying taxes um, as well, we speak. Well, they haven't paid yet. Uh, well, I guess if you got yeah, something dude, last some year. Some of them did. Yeah, yeah if, you got some, if you got a check last year, you should have paid your taxes. Paying yeah. taxes is not like mandatory really you can dude it's not mandatory dude, it's not mandatory. like it's not mandatory yes. you can opt to not pay them but I, there's a penalty to, you can opt to not breathe or, or no no or eat, breathing too, is mandatory but, well, but paying taxes you don't really have to no but don't listen you know, to him He's i'm not a saying bad influence i'm not kids. saying not to i'm just saying you could avoid them and then get in trouble for avoiding them oh yeah but you know down that path i, I definitely disaster. don't uh subscribe to the not paying the taxes portion of it i'm just saying it's it's a slippery slope if you get a slippery crap ton slope. of money from slippery us slope. and then don't pay your Someone taxes send this it. link to his wife <laughs> yeah so everybody out there who's getting uh soe checks make sure you pay your taxes on time please thank you so you can keep making cool stuff and stay out of jail don't yeah. be snipes yeah i don't want you up in jail snipes no. snipes now no. jail sucks yeah, well, I hated yeah. the big house. <laughs> That's why they call him Pretty Ricky. Anyway, all right. Well, let's, uh, thank you, Mr. Rick. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it for right. clearing that up. A lot of people want to know that stuff, and uh, now we got uh, a little bit of insight on what it takes to actually get this stuff right. done. Thanks. If you get a lot of questions, I'll come back next next week. All right, we'll do. All right, we're not actually not doing next week because we got oh. E3. Oh, dude, I'm e3. looking forward to E3. Yeah, E3 is next week, so no uh, Insider Player Studio next week. Sadly enough. 
but we will continue the week after. So let's right. get into it then. Mr. Ricky, I will let right. you go back thank to you. work, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Everybody say goodbye to Mr. Rick. All righty. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rick Reynolds. Appreciate it. All right. Rick Reynolds is no longer in the building. Now it's just me. You get man, T R A Y. All right. Um, so today we have some. Uh, no, nah, no, no live E3 episode. I'm sorry. I actually have to work the floor, so I'm not going to be available for inside the player studio type stuff. But uh, I will return with some really cool stuff the following week. I'm hoping. I am hoping that uh, Mr. Chris Lang will be able to grace us with his presence and show us the loveliness that is the PS viewer. That's what we're calling it these days. Now, we don't really have a name. If you guys come up with something really cool, uh, let me know. We'll probably name it something. But that's what it's called right now, PS View. I just threw that out there. Nobody, I'm the only person calling it that, so don't take that as official. So uh, hopefully uh, that will uh, be ready to go. The state it is in right now, it actually loads up um, FBXs. It will display FBX. Uh, displays all the textures uh, the current version of it actually loads you have to load up the textures manually uh, what they're going to do is create texture sets so that you guys can just click a button and it applies it to the item that you're working on so if it's a harasser attachment you click on the harasser textures if it's a helmet for VSTR or NC you click on one of those uh, texture sets and it'll apply all the textures that go along with that um, item so you guys won't have to be loading textures or doing any of that stuff all this stuff will be done for you so hopefully that will be the next round of features that go into it or we may just uh, kind of release it early to get some feedback uh, as far as like interface and intuitiveness uh, uh, ease of use and things like that it's fairly straightforward uh, it's not that hard to use. Uh, a lot of, I mean, all of the the boxes are, are modal, so you can dock them and and move them around and do all kinds of stuff. It's got you can control the FOV time of day. Um, obviously, you can load load the textures and you can different sky files that we have in there for the game, so you can actually see your items in the the native environment. Anybody out there doing it for EQ or EQ2? Uh, I don't know what version they're going to be releasing for you guys, but uh, Mr. Dave Brown, uh, one of the art directors on EQ, uh, actually loaded up one of his items, uh, one of his characters inside of this viewer, and that looks pretty cool. So uh, it's definitely applicable for you guys out there if you're making some EQ stuff. Uh, it also will load uh, FBXs with skeletons and then export to a special FBX format that we use um, that you guys will submit. So lots of really cool details that are going to get worked out and uh, hammered out in the next couple weeks with that viewer. And I'm hoping to have Mr. Lang on the next episode. That'll be after E3. So if anybody's got any questions about that, uh, let me know. Oh, it sounds like hype, huh? Okay. Well, don't use it. It's up to you, sir. You think I'm hyping you up? You think it's all bull jive? That's cool. You think I'm you think I'm playing? You think I'm lying? Do I look like a liar? Look at my face. I'm not lying. He ain't lying. For real. It's all on the up and up. I've seen it. If you uh, want to see uh some images of it, I put uh, a couple images up on the forums. You guys can check that out. It's up to you. If you think it's hype, okay, it's fine. Unicorns don't exist either. You know, that's cool. Everybody everybody's got their own thing. All right, so let's uh, check out some submissions real quick, shall we? We'll go to the computer here. Um, all right, so I picked up, I see Mr. Nico Coco has been up to his old tricks again. And, of course, Giz has been kicking out helmets. Of course he has. Um, so we're going to check out uh, this first one up here. This uh, TR 
helmet called Visage. Let's see what, uh, I don't even know who made that. Let me see if I can get this kid's information. Uh, view submission form. All right, King Kellogg. Mr. King Kellogg, sir. You are or the first contestant up on Inside the Player Studio. So uh, when I first loaded this file up, Mr. Kellogg, I hope you're out there. Hope you're listening. Are you out there? Are you there? Annie, are you okay? All right. Um, I didn't notice. Look at that. You got some faces that are inverted. Your normals are flipped. So they're actually facing inside. As you can see, I can see through the back of the helmet. So, sir, please fix that. One good thing. Look at that. It's one piece, one solid piece. That's awesome. Good deal. Good deal. Way to go. I'm glad you did that. But yeah, you got to make sure all of your normals are facing outward. Okay. Oh, is this dude still? Are you still tripping? Really? Jadrick? Calm down, dog. Um, all right. So on this one, one of the things I noticed that, I mean, like I said, again, a lot of these things you guys don't see. Uh, but you're using part of the texture that actually utilizes um, some of the normal map. So you might want to want to check the normal map as well as the color map to make sure you're not actually laying your details, your your colors over the top of something that has uh, normal map information. Because this is what you get. Because obviously, I mean, I'm assuming that you did not want that in your helmet. You just wanted that to be kind of like flat red, right? I'm assuming that's correct. Um, so, yeah, please, you know, double check that against the normal map. I like the design. Design is good. The geo looks nice. Look at that. Nice geometry. It's pretty good. Uh, this gets a little sloppy in there. You might want to clean this up just a smidge. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, you, you got, uh, yeah, let's see, you got something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can use that, that geometry. I would probably just simplify it a little bit more because it's not really necessary. And you got some double edges here that just kind of add geometry for the sake of geometry. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. Uh, I think mainly what's happening on this helmet that probably could should change is that you know your usage of the textures and where they actually land so if I'm looking at this I would say that should probably be solid a solid color something like that shouldn't be like this stripey two-tone type thing so you've got like you know solid gray here uh, and then you've got like some weirdness going on here and of course like some normal map bull job going down on that so you might want to clean that up uh, and then just find like some kind of flat area in the texture map um, so that it actually comes out nicely uh, in here I would tighten that up see what's happening there it's got like a little I've got the old man lip I've got the gums going you might want to tighten this line up just so you can get a nice hard edge uh, I would hit that uh, let's see what's going on in there why am I ducking what am I doing this what is this this is not actually 3D. It's actually a 2D plane. So what am I doing? Uh, yeah, you got some some craziness going on here, and I would just actually hit that. Bam, 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 right across, and then tighten that up. Real nice, like. But yeah, I like. Uh, you got enough subdivisions in the neck. Great, great. A lot of people neglect that. Uh, this may be problematic because it's stacked like that and you want this to be rigid when it folds. So uh, it real will require some kind of special rigging, uh, waiting attention. So if uh, one of our guys is um, actually not paying attention, this could get a little sloppy. Um, so try to avoid certain stuff like that because, you know, you want to get uh, the best possible outcome. But yeah, I like it. I like was was where it started and where it ended up. Pretty good stuff, King Kellogg. All right. Next up, I believe that's me. Let's see who's this one. 
Let's see who submitted this joint. Okay, going back, going, going back, back to the submission page. And Enig! <laughs> What's up, Enig? The electronic nig. All right, what's going on, Enig? This is your life here. All right, so it's like Enig's got some pretty nice uh, geo. I've always been a fan of his work. He's got some really cool stuff. Um, neck looks good, nice and clean. Uh, I don't know about that, yeah, whatever, yeah. Yeah, no, man, what's going on here? Yeah, I would just go ahead and get rid of that. Because it's barely showing. And you could probably just hit that and put that curve in there. I don't know. Overdraw is not that bad. But still, I don't want that stuff in there like that. See, no back faces on that joint. None on that one. This piece looks good. Let me pull that up. Pull this. Pop his top. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Enig, nice and clean. I likes, I likes. Uh, this one might just be like a one and done. Might just be able to just toss this joint in the game. Uh, if anything, I would probably just make sure that this ends up being shiny black when we when we get it all said and done. Throw some detail normals on that. Uh, you got a little stretching right there. A little bit of stretching right here. You probably just tighten that up a bit, just a smidge. And um, other than that, man, that is damn good work, Enig. Nicely done. I like to see stuff like this. It makes my job a lot easier. Good job. Good job, Enig. And look at that. We barely even use triangles, man. You got a whole bunch of triangles to spare. So, you, you know, I don't know. You might want to go in there and bevel that edge right there. Get a nice little round, rounded edge right there. Hit that thing like two, three times. <laughs> Bam. Got a lot of spare geo to use, so, you know, might as well use it. Use it or lose it. All right, Enig, good job. I like that. Very nice. All right, let's move on to Nico Rococo Ricola. All right, Nico. Think you slick, huh? Nico thinks he's uh, all that and then some. So, uh, yeah, again, of course, you can't tell that he's using like parts of the texture that's got like a bunch of different detail normals on it. So I'm not going to blame you for that one, Nico. You know, you can get away with that one. I'm going to let, you, I'm gonna let you slide with that. I'm going to let you slide, brother. All right. Um, so, I don't know. I think this, this area probably could use some more detailing. What do you got up in here? Yeah, he's skating right up against the edge. Right up against the edge of the triangle count. So, I guess you can't really add too much. Um, but, yeah, maybe you can rob Peter to pay Paul in some of these things. I like the way he did these edges. Look at these. Look at that. Nice. Nice and clean. Nico Coco, you've done it again, sir. Good stuff. Good stuff. I likes. I don't really have any complaints. Maybe your color choices. Like some of the stuff is probably a little bit too, you know, stripey. You know, gray, black, gray, black, you know, red. I would just make this simple. You know, usually when you see these types of things, uh, the goggles and stuff like that is usually just kind of all black. So I would go like mostly black, maybe a red stripe and mix flat black and dark grays or something like that. Mix that up and just kind of like separate that out to make it look like a more like an add on to the helmet, which is normally what it is. And of course, you know, choose the shiny part of the texture so that you can make sure that shines. Look at that. Got the shine on it. Got the highlight. Got the soul glow on that. Nicely done. Just let your show soul glow. I like what he did here. I think he, he knows where these detail normals are, which is awesome. So it looks like a little rubberized texture there. Pretty cool. Got a little wire right there. Nice details, Nico. Nicely done. Nicely done. 
All right, that's it for my samples. Anybody want me to check out their stuff? Uh, hit me up with a page number on the forums because that's where I'm going. I'm going straight to the forums. And we'll pick out some lucky customer. Oh, let me throw that up there while we're at it. Look at that. SOE Live, 70, 73 days left while I'm here talking about SOE Live. I'm going to be there August 14th through 17th. Las Vegas, Planet Hollywood. Register now and get you a free SOE Live t-shirt made from Jinx in the mail. Of course, you won't have to wait in line anymore because it will send you your badge to you if you register early enough. And it's only $149. And it's Vegas. Come on. You can't go wrong with that. You get to hang out with us, go drinking with Matt, and get all blasted and have good times. Pool party, club, dancing, music, food, fun, and games all in one place. SOE Live, Planet Hollywood, Las Vegas, August 14th through the 17th. Get it going. All right. Is it possible to submit outfit decals soon? Uh, Yes, soon. I don't actually have a date on that, sir. Sorry. I wish I did. I wish I did. Uh, NC Field Grunt. Okay. You got a page number on that one? Yo Giz? Huh? You know, we won't be just go searching for your thing, man. I'm not about to start doing that. Okay, the penetrator. Steve-O, I think I already did the penetrator, man. Come on now. Didn't I do the penetrator? I did that like two weeks ago. Give somebody else a shot. All right, uh, Delta Nig, Biscuit 3. Let's see what Biscuit 3 has on uh, going on here. Whoa, Biscuit. I think we already talked about this one. You still working on this one, Bisc? Bisquick. Um, let's see where it's at now. See where it's going. Jeez. Things going on for days and days. All right. Uh, yeah. Looks like you're trying to utilize some of these normal maps. But I would suggest that you don't. Just keep it simple, my friend. Keep it real simple. I like the design of the helmet. I like it. But yeah, it's a little too stripy. Just keep these solid areas. Just keep them simple. So I would go like probably black right here. Or a dark gray. Right there. Simplify this whole piece right here. One solid color. And, you know, try not to get like, you know, teal, purple, gray, teal, purple, gray. Like this whole stripey thing's going. It's getting kind of crazy. So keep it real simple. Colors, you should only have like a couple color changes across the surface. Um, but, yeah, I like the I like the model. It looks like you may need to uh, utilize a little bit more geometry. Yeah, you got a you got a little bit. You got a little bit to spare. Looks good. Yep, you did that on the 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 crown where it was kind of flat at, at first. Clean that up. Pretty cool. Very nice. It's coming along. Still got a little bit too much geometry back here, man. Too much. You can probably lose every other row back here. Too much stuff going on. Keep it simple. Don't use what you don't need. All right, I think I went over that one before, so I'm not going to spend too much time. The Overfiend by Biscuit3. Uh, King Kellogg, I just did some of yours. Shockwave. Let's do some harasser rims. See what shockwaves. What? White walls? Seriously. Seriously. Got shockwave. Got some white walls on a harasser. That's seriously old school, homie. I'm inclined to like that. If even better, you know, it would be better if you could find like a piece of. I should stop it with the rotating, dude. Oh my god, stop it with the spinning top. Cut it out. Um, a piece that's more grungy in that texture that's kind of white, maybe. Shockwave, you could find that. A piece that's like almost white like i think it's too white i think it's too much too much white going on but yeah i like the idea great great idea that's awesome i think somebody's gonna like that too out there no it's not too out there not at all that's a good uh good use of uh an imagine imagination right there i like that i like the what it what it basically what it does it makes the tire look low profile without it actually being low profile pretty cool 
Uh, I would definitely remove the red, though. Can't do the red. That's going to be problematic. So pick chrome or gray or black or something. But you can't do faction colors in those unless you plan on submitting faction specific rims, which is your prerogative as well. So you can do that, um, but you need to submit three of them. So there you go. That goes for anybody else out there that wants to submit uh, harasser stuff. Try to remove any faction specific colors from your attachments because uh, I'm assuming when you submit those, I'm going to assume that you only want that faction to have that color because then we can we'll only put it in that way so if you don't submit three i'm not going to make the other two for you so make it happen all right uh let's see what else we got going on here that was pretty cool i was pleasantly surprised about that one uh anybody else uh check out spoke rims on page one spoke rims <sighs> All right, dude, you got to give me give me something better than yet. Give me something better. Spoke rims, there it is, hubcaps. All right, man. Automaton, dude. I don't know, man. It's, uh, I don't know. Man. I don't know how I feel about these. I don't know, man. You got to give me some time with this. I don't know. I think I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe not the gold joints because they're, they're a little too flashy. And I'm, I'm, I'm just glad you didn't put knockoffs on them. I'm just glad you didn't put knockoffs on them. If you put knockoffs on them, then that would have been probably the, the, the end of this discussion. But, yeah, the spokes. Yeah, yeah. That's under the, the limit? All four of those under the limit? I find that hard to believe. How'd you pull that off? A fable? Um, Yeah, I'd just go with Chrome, man. Try that. And then, yeah, you know, I don't know. How about this? Try, try toning it down and making it less flashy. So maybe, like, take some of the Chrome off. Like, maybe this back part, maybe make that dark and then you know, you keep the cap chrome and then maybe all the, the back spokes make those darker and not chrome. Hmm. It's damn good execution though. I can't I can't even I can't even lie. Damn good execution. Pretty damn good. Uh yes, Luma Fiber is not flashy at all. You know. It's not. It's a difference. It's a difference. So there you go. T Ray has spoken. Sorry. All right. Uh, anybody else? Uh, let's see. Anybody else got something? I'll just keep on going. Oh, F0, top of the page. Let's see. F0. Harasser F0. Jeez. Come on. All right, Stubborn. This is, uh, yeah, man. It's a little out there, bro. I don't know where, it's, where does it stop and where does it begin. Like, you can't can't take over the whole hood it's not yeah you need to just make a grill and keep it grill and like all this stuff that swoops around and we don't even have attachments for the back like that that's kind of crazy uh if this is all supposed to be like one piece i would say this one this doesn't this doesn't really fit with this piece I think this piece has got a, you got a little bit too much going on. Let's separate this like right here, bam. <laughs> Probably take these little teeth off, or move them in closer and just make this straight, like how it's all wiggly and stuff like that. Like the line work is very contradictory. This is the only wavy thing on this grill, you know. So you got to look at them as single pieces, right? Individual pieces. So like as an individual piece. You know, this is like you got all these straight lines and all these straight shapes and then you get this wavy thing in there. It's kind of weird. It kind of breaks the, the paradigm that you got going on. And then you got these, which, you know, we don't really have fenders. And then you're getting kind of encroaching upon like where does 
where does this stop and where does the windshield start? Man, you're getting, keep it within the, the confines of windshield and bumper. Um, that I think that's going to go a long way. Maybe you got something else on the page too. Hold on. No, that's about it. All right. Yeah, I think you went went a little too far with that one. Pull it in. Pull it in a little bit more. Make it a little bit more simple. All right. Anybody else? Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? All right. I'm going to just keep on going. Um, I'm going to keep on going. Bump, uh, Shockwave again. I don't want to keep critiquing you, Shockwave. I like that one. It may be a little bit too big, though. You're going a little too big. It's starting to look World of Warcraft. A little bit too bulky. So pull this down a little bit. Pull it back. And you might have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. Uh, I'm curious. If we did armor designs, would you check it out? I will definitely check it out. Can't check it in, but I will definitely check it out. So if you want to do armor designs, that's fine. We can get that get that popping off right now. Won't be able to take them until uh, later. We want to get that uh, that viewer up and running and making it all legit for you guys before you start submitting uh, armor pieces and stuff like that. So a couple of weeks, we can see what that uh, that viewer does for you guys and then move from there. How about that? All right. Uh, let's see what the shock trooper has. All right. This is the guy is supposed to bring it back to the original uh, TR aesthetic. Okay, it's just a concept right now, right? Looks like it. Hmm. Like the concept. Kind of reminds me of the helmet that um, Beast Buster just made not too long ago. A couple weeks ago. I wonder if it's still here. It's a good design. Kind of reminiscent of a helmet that I just saw. So... Uh, maybe I can find it if I'm passing through here. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Let me get some new people. Let me go to, uh, ooh, Luke. Luke, I've never seen you before, sir. Oh, Luke. Yeah, Maximilian. All right, Luke. Um, yeah, this is not going to work. We can't do this. We can't. Because you, you're requiring too much special attention to the, the weighting. So once you put that on and then it's going to clip with different armors. and Unless you only want this on a specific class, I would say avoid doing stuff like this. I'm assuming this is supposed to be TR and it's not really TR style. I don't really know what to say about this one as far as like technically it's probably a bad idea. Because it's not going to wait properly. And when somebody turns their head, this is all going to turn to crap. And you're going to blame us for it. I would say I would say this. Check this out. When the viewer comes out, you will be doing the waiting. So how about you do that and see if it actually works for you? My gut is saying that it's not going to work. So I would say avoid doing this. But it's up to you. Because you got to do the waiting. So there you go. Um, but yeah. I don't think that's really going to work. For us. Alright. Luke. Thanks for trying man. Keep it, keep, uh, keep the ideas coming. I mean not everybody hits it out of the park on the first try. Alright. See Nick Knack. See what you got. Um, no you won't be doing the waiting in the viewer. You'll do the waiting prior to viewing it. So you'll do all the waiting and you export it as an FBX and then you will view it in the viewer. That's it. Uh, this, yeah, the headphones, man. Yeah. Not, not feeling this design at all. Not really. Not really Vanu. It's a little, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's just not it's just not a good design. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Bad idea. You know, it's a good G at least to check your geo to make sure it's your execution. Yeah, execution's fine. Probably a little bit too many uh too many subdivisions here. Uh execution's fairly decent, so I mean you you're a competent modeler. So I would say just come up with a better design and then you'll be off to the races. 
There you go, knick-knack. Throw a little something out there for you. All right, you got 15 minutes. Uh, Riot Police. All right, let's check out Riot Police. You're going to give me a page number or something like that, or are you supposed to guess? Uh, let's see, Riot Police. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, I give up on Riot Police. Sorry. I'm not going to spend this whole show looking for your stuff. You got to help me out, man. You got to help me out. All right, Hyper Slug, Reconciler. You, uh, ooh, yeah. Man, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Yeah, again, I think <laughs> you guys crack me up. Shockwave. Um, uh, yeah, I think the the biggest problem with that is just just doesn't really fit the TR very well. So I would say no. Probably start with a different one. Uh, did he say page two? Page two. Okay, page two. Ride police. Is that what I'm looking for? Okay, ride police. There it is. Bam, McFluff. All right, McFluff. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think on this one, same thing. Same thing. It's just the, the design is a little uh, awkward. Not really TR style. I don't know what's the deal with the logos being on the front. So is this a, is this a visor? What is that? Is that part of the visor? Hmm. I would say lose the visor and then work out something else. Maybe get a brim here somewhere to kind of seal that in. Lose the visor for sure. The visor is killing it. And then do something with this. You know, make that something. You know, obviously it's a chin strap and this is a turtleneck, but um but yeah, I think you may have something here if you you know, put a brim on that and maybe you know, harden that up a little bit, trim that up, uh, and then figure out what to do with the front. Be it a visor or just some straight up goggles. I mean, just some straight goggles on this thing with that might work. Yeah, but the visor is, is murdering it. Just murdered it. So let me hold it. let me go back to go further down. Maybe it changed. Do it justice. Hold hold up. I don't want to pass judgment too fast. I'm not like that. Fair. Fair and balanced. Uh yeah. Stay the same. Yeah, I think you need to get rid of that visor, man. That's killing it. Killing it. So critical. Yes, I am. I'm trying to make you guys better artists. You know, you can't can't be better if I'm taking it light on you. You know, if I'm just be like, oh man, that's awesome, you know. Stroking your ego. And it's not about that. You it's a, it's a lot of competition out there, man. You got guys Arctor, Nico Coco, Wrecking Shop, you know what I mean? You got to compete. So I got to get you guys toughened up. Got to get you ready for the big times. So, all right, Mad Maverick. Let's see what NC Commando helmet looks like. All right, all right. Madman Maverick. Eh, looks all right, looks all right. Uh, These boxies, little boxy stuff, is, you know, get rid of that. Just remove it. It's not really doing anything. One thing people uh, tend to do a lot is just having shapes for the sake of having shapes. Try to avoid that. You know, it's like, oh, it's, I think I need something there. and Just put a bunch of boxes. Like, okay, try not to, try to avoid. It's like right here, right there on the brim. That should just be really simple. Just a simple shape. Like, you know, don't get carried away and add the bevels and indents and just, you know, Balance. Balance is what you need in a good design. It needs to be sections of detail and then section broad swaths of nothingness. So you get your eye rest so that the design can flow. You know, if you're just details all across and you can, can't even see where you're supposed to be looking, you're supposed to concentrate the eye in certain areas and then the other areas, the little details are supposed to just kind of move you from one, one shape to the next. Um, but you're, you're kind of breaking that. Like these large areas where it's like 
calm, that's great. Like there, right here, right here, it's great too. Large areas of calm. But then when you get up here, it's like, whoa, indent, bevel, indent, bevel. Calm it down. Just bring it back a little bit. And right here, that needs to go, and this probably needs to go too. Just keep it real simple. Um, see, nice, a little 3D print, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's the end of it. But yeah, you see, look at look how this ends up. That's what happens right there. It's like bap, 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 a little stripey, and then when you back up off it, you get the moray pattern going. Kind of crazy. Um, all right. So who else? It's got uh, okay. Do you know how the ligate is coming along? Which one is that? Was that one yours? Is that one yours? Let's see if I can find it. Is it just, just that simple? This is another arc torn joint. I don't know, dude. You gotta you gotta come on, torn. Arc torn, you gotta give me something. Here it is. Let's see what this thing is. Uh yeah, it's already done, dude. It's just waiting. It's waiting for do I have a back a background in art? Yes, I do. I I went to school, went to art school. Uh got a basically came out with a degree in animation. Uh and animated for seven years. So yeah, I I did my fair share of art stuff. Uh you know, went through every art class in high school and and then some and actually did uh a bunch of stuff in junior college while I was in high school. So yeah, I've, I've done a couple of things. A couple of things. But yeah, that was already good to go, Mr. Arctorn. Just be patient, brother. We got a gang load of stuff in front of you. If you really want to know when it's coming out, talk to talk to Terry Tay Ray Dactyl on Twitter. Taylor is in control. So people you may not know that we just process the stuff, right? We process it, clean it up, get it ready for the game. And Taylor does all the item IDs, gets them all ready to go and puts them on a schedule. So I don't touch a schedule. I don't touch any of the release dates. So when people ask me, when's my, my thing coming up? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to, I would have to like go bug Taylor every time somebody asks me a question. So, I implore you, please go bug Taylor. She'll she'll most likely know. She'll probably know if she's tested yet or if, if she's actually got it sitting in the queue. And she can probably give you a week and a date in which it will come out in most cases. All right. Uh, who's next? Anybody else? Berets or ride. Go ahead and ride. Go for it. See what that gets you. All right. Uh, let's see. Chess piece decals. Let me go ahead and do that one. Do some decals real quick. Ebon Nebula. I don't really know. I don't really know what these have to do with plant side. You know? What do you guys think? Think these are um planet side worthy? I really know. Question real question is, the real question is, would you buy a decal with chess pieces on it. Because that's all that really matters. That's all that really matters. Do you believe that a large number of people are going to buy a decal with a chess piece on it? I don't know. I'm really on the fence with that one. I get it, but I don't know. So, I don't know. I'm assuming that's already submitted, so I may have to think about that a little bit harder. Uh, okay, Giz. Okay, Giz, always doing his thing. No, dude, I already said no. Look at that. Look at that. Bam, no. <laughs> How come? It's, I don't, it's, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Is it a chin guard? Giz, I mean, some, it's just a bad idea. Like, You've had great ideas, and sometimes you have bad ideas. This one's just a bad idea. I don't even know what it is. Like, you know, I can imagine, like, all right, uh, all right, we're going out to fight somebody, and somebody's like, hey, give me that chin guard uh, piece thing. 
And that's what you running out in the battle with. Some chin guard. No helmet. Chin guard headphones. Give me the chin guard headphones. I'm going out to uh, get my head blown off. I, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. That's that's why I think it's just a no, dude. It's I don't get it. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes you have great ideas. Everybody's everybody's like that. You got great ideas, and bam, bam. Sometimes it like flows, do 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 do, and then sometimes it's just like, nah. This one is just like no. So, like, yeah, just toss that one out and start on something new. I wouldn't even waste my time on that one. All right, because I know Giz kicks him out. Giz kicks him out for sure. I got five minutes left. Five minutes left. So that means I got to do some promo stuff. Got to let you guys know what's going on around the world. All right, of course, we got Command Center every Thursday, second Thursday of the month. We won't be doing one this this week because, I mean, next week because we got E3. E3, our big show of the year that we're going to be showing off a little bit of PlayStation 4 PS2 action. So, you know, watch the coverage and watch the footage of the PlayStation 4 version of Planetside 2. Looking good, playing good. It's going to be a good time. All right, and of course, we got Friday Night Ops every Friday, 5 o'clock. Tune in. Maggie's doing her thing, always. Work in progress every Tuesday, 3 o'clock on this channel. You got Devin and Klaus and those guys building stuff right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. Working on the most current update. So you want to know where we are in production? Always check that out. And of course, Inside the Player Studio every Monday except when I'm not here, which is next Monday when we'll be in L.A. doing our thing for Planetside 2 PS4 first look so check that out folks appreciate it and uh i'll probably take a couple questions got three minutes left three minutes left uh anybody got any questions okay will the valkyrie will there be any valkyrie later this week i don't know why would did somebody say something about later this week about the valkyrie i don't know possibly i haven't been checking checking up on it um I'm going to say no, and then you can, if you find out anything, then you can say I lied. I really don't know anything about the Valkyrie information. I thought we put out Valkyrie information when we talked about it the first time, but we may be, I don't know, it's not launching anytime soon, not that I know of. Uh, it's on the roadmap, and I think it's on the roadmap for July, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Luma Fiber Wheels. All right, Sir Kane, here's the deal. Luma Fiber is, I, I had this conversation with somebody. I forget. It might have been Sir Kane or somebody else on the forums. Here's the deal with Luma Fiber. It's either Luma Fiber or it's a cosmetic attachment. There is no double. You can't do both. So, see, the Luma Fiber, if you do Luma Fiber wheels, then it's going in the Luma Fiber slot. And which means that if you do Luma Fiber wheels, then you'll be able to put hubcaps over the top of them. So Luma Fiber is strictly designated for just the body so that we don't get any of these wacky situations where if I did Luma Fiber wheels, and of course I wouldn't have anything on the body, but then I could put hubcaps over the top of my Luma Fiber wheels and then ruin the whole thing. Or... If I did a Luma Fiber windshield, it won't be enough to justify buying Luma Fiber because you're only on the windshield. And at the same time, you'll still be able to put another windshield over the top of it. So in order to keep the category straight and clean, Luma Fiber is Luma Fiber, hubcaps are hubcaps. If you want the hubcaps to glow, pick a glowy texture on the harasser sheet. They won't strobe, but they'll glow. So there you go. Those are your options. There is no, but what if I, no, it doesn't work that way. Those are the rules. Work within the rules and then you'll get something really cool. But there is no exceptions to those because as soon as you start breaking outside of that, man, it's all hell's going to break loose. Trust me. You don't want to deal with it. Well, shit, I don't want to deal with it. So Luma Fiber is Luma Fiber, only for the body of the vehicle. Try not to wrap it around the 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 shield, the windshields, and stuff like that because it'll just get covered up. And 
You know, if you want to go on the tires, I mean, on the wheels, just know that somebody's going to cover them up on the wheels. So there it is. All right, it's 6 o'clock, folks, which means my time is up. And once again, it's been a lovely, lovely time. I'd like to thank my good friend, Mr. Rick Reynolds, for coming by and explaining a little bit of something about taxes. I guess I better go home and pay mine. I don't want to get snipes. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me inside the player studio. Peace. <laughs>